I'm gonna give you guys a little up close and personal with the Oscars. So here it is. Oh yeah. Let's see what's up with Mr. Slinks. Somebody's getting hungry again. Ha, turtles are falling all over the place back into the pond. There goes one. They are some big suckers. Hey, look at this curly tail on top of a grandest shell. That's pretty awesome. Hey man, black shell, warm. They're gonna go ahead and bask on it. Now, today is a gas camp kind of question day. We're gonna wander around. I'm gonna answer some questions. We're gonna see the farm. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So I hope you guys will take a tour with me. Thank you to our amazing supporters who help to make this show possible every week. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennan. This week, our special shout out goes to Dustin Brandon. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. Here we are in the Solcata habitat. And the first question comes from John Stapleton. Hey, Kennan, how you doing? I've uh, been wondering about uh, good old Lumpy. I want to make sure he's doing well. All right, well, here he is, everybody. Lumpy's doing good. He's just kind of hanging out in the late afternoon, uh, getting uh, out of the heat right now. But he's been doing awesome. He's back in here. He's been in here for a few weeks now. And uh, he's doing very good. You know, he's just kind of hanging out with the gals. He wanders around. He eats. He poops. He drinks. He's happy. Right now, though, he's being shy, aren't you, buddy? There you go, right there. All right, so there's Lumps doing very good. First question answered. Like I say, today's gonna be a little bit of a different one. I'm gonna just wander around and uh, you know answer these questions. I got another question coming up. Let's find it uh, as we're looking at some of the other ones. Here is uh, one of the females. I think I named them last week, but I gotta be honest, I forgot their name, so uh, forgive me. Uh, basically, there was another question. I don't know who it's from, but I do remember it. And it was basically that this gentleman put his tortoise outside. And he started to notice uh, the face turned white, uh, which was pretty interesting. He said he got white around his lips and, uh, or not lips, but on his beak like this female right there. Sometimes they get a very superficial fungus. As you can see, there's some right there down here in Florida. It's called scud. It's no big deal. Uh, even wild tortoises will get this from time to time. But this here uh, is just a minor little uh, affliction that happens to tortoises when they're outdoors. Uh, you can actually put Vaseline or antifungal cream on it and it goes away and then you just scrape off uh, with a toothbrush the rest of it. Now as for the white around the tortoise's eyes, it could be what he's eating. He might be gnawing on some things out there that have a white residue that is left on the tortoise's face. Uh, that can be uh, no big deal as long as the animal's moving and is not uh, you know, acting differently, then I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, as you can see, all the tortoises here are doing very well. The sulcatas are always very curious as to what's going on. And again, here's another uh, little tortoise. This female, as you guys may or may not know, is the gal that came into the United States in uh, 1977 as an adult. She was this big. So she's at the very least 42 years old, or I would add 20 years to that. So she's probably 62. But you can see this old injury there. It's got some uh, exposed bone and that's okay. That's just a little bit of injury that happens. And I want to show you a little bit more of the white in there on the scoots. Hey, right, what you going to do? A little bit of the white on the scoots here of this female as she's trying to come and get a bite out of this uh, camera, out of the GoPro. But you can see a little bit of the white right there. No big deal. Uh, so it could just be a little bit of a fungus, uh, but not something I would worry too much about if your animal's moving around nice and uh, normal-like. And I'm just giving a good once over here. And just checking everybody. There you go. Awesome. Very good. Let's continue. It's always fun doing these Ask Cam Kennan questions. I wanted to get a few of them answered today because some of them had built up and you know what? Uh, they aren't necessarily topics I can make one whole giant video on. So I figured we'd answer a few and we'd go ahead and uh, just see some of the animals here. So we're now wandering into the front area, the front yard, and we've got, of course, the radiated tortoises. There's one right now in the late afternoon doing a little grazing. Uh, again, we've got some pond action here. This is the original Aquascape pond and it's doing very well. And while I'm at it, guys, you can help me do my chores. I like to check in here and make sure there aren't any little turtles that kind of got caught in. And guess what? Look what I found. A little turtle that got caught in there. So I like to do this during the day, but this is one of the Hyosemi's grandest. And um, basically, guys, you know, I put these guys out here. As you remember, they graduated. That was uh, our tortoise graduation day. And they're doing awesome. 
Uh, every once in a while, they just get sucked into the skimmer, but thankfully the skimmer uh, can't really hurt them. They'll just have to hang out in there for a little bit until I get around to opening it up once or twice a day. Oh, yeah, and they poop. You should be known, these are the poopiest turtles you'll ever meet, uh, especially when they're babies. Uh, we also saw the Heosemi spinosa uh, a little while ago. My buddy Chris Hagen came over, um, and that's an interesting turtle, very similar to this one. Maybe Tom will do a quick side-by-side -side and show you the Spinosa up against the really cool Heosemis Grandis. So they're very closely related. However, the Spinosa has those really spiny shells, uh, the serrations around the edge. But guess what? So do ju the juvenile uh, Heosemis Grandis, or giant Asian wood turtle. So let's put him back. Well, you know what? Let's put him away from the skimmer. There's also two other little babies out here, or two other juveniles. How about some... Amadura subulagosa. These are the pink belly side necks. They're hanging out today. Very cool. They're just basking on this log. So they've got a really cool area to hang out in. So let's go ahead and see this little guy off. Oh yeah. And then not only that, we do have Oscars here. I'm going to give you guys a little up close and personal with the Oscars. So here it is. Got to wipe it off so you guys can see everything that's going on. Okay, so now we're going to wander on over to Sophia's Pond. And we're just going to make sure everything's A-OK -okay over here. Uh, and I'm going to answer, a, oh, look at this, see? Things are not OK over here. We've got a little bit of a block. So I've got to come on over here. You see that film on top of the pond? When the water goes into the vault, sometimes these bamboo leaves up here will fall down and we'll clog up this little area. So I'm gonna go ahead and have to put you guys down because I need both hands, but you should be able to see what I'm up to. And I gotta pull out. You see, all I gotta do is this. Just pull out a little bit of the stuff that gets in there. And this is some maintenance I do once a day or once every couple of days. But you'll see that even in the short amount of time that it takes for me to do this, it actually clears things up fast enough for that film to just disappear. So I want to make sure everything's looking beautiful here at the camp because I love these ponds so much. But that's all it took. Now watch this. You can really see how that film is being sucked down into the filtration system. So that'll clear up in about five minutes. No issues. And in the meantime, I'm supposed to be answering questions. So I got to go back on and see what we got left. As we make our way, uh, well, let's go see Darwin because I think Darwin is a good tortoise to do uh, with this. Darwin, Socrates, or Nostradamus. Uh, this question comes from Joe Tulsa and he says, I've seen the little tenacious little tortoise bite you. What happens when a big tortoise bites you? Do they hold on? Do they make a deep cut? Do they pull your toe or finger inside the shell and not let go? <laughs> well, Joe, here are, well, here is the biggest tortoise I own. It is Darwin. So I figured I'd just go ahead and let you guys see what happens when she bites me. Uh, you know, this way we can really do it and you can see exactly what goes on as I put my hand out right here for her to bite me so I can tell you what goes on. And uh, let's see, I don't think anything's gonna happen. And no, 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 that's not gonna happen here because I'm not that kind of channel. Uh, there's another guy that has a hat like this or similar uh, who does bite videos, but that ain't me. Uh, but I can tell you that what happens is basically Darwin could probably break the skin. However, she'd quickly let go because she really just wants some uh, grass. And as you saw, she really didn't want to bite me at that moment, but now she does. Uh, uh, I don't know if I should do it. I, I, I'm not going to do it. Uh, same thing with Dar uh, Socrates. Um, so basically these two tortoises, they would break the skin because they are large and they have a sharp beak. They have to have sharp beaks to get through uh, some of the cactus and other roughage that I have here for them to eat and that they would find on their respective island homes. Let me see if I can get some and we can just show you what they can do. So here's some cactus. I'm going to go ahead and just break oh, this whole piece off. We're going to give it to the tortoises right now, and you can kind of see. Now, it's not exactly the same as a finger, 
but we have to just assume that they have powerful enough jaws to break the skin of a human being. In fact, my cousin Michelle was over this summer and these tortoises have never really bitten anyone. And it's kind of hard to get bitten by these tortoises if you're not paying attention. But Michelle was feeding and feeding and didn't realize how close to the edge of the cactus uh, that the tortoise's mouth had got. And she got a nip on her finger from Nostradamus who's over there in the, in the water. And uh, unfortunately, uh, she got a little break in the skin. He promptly let go, so he didn't pull it in. The one time that I did have a tortoise kind of pull my finger in was actually a leopard tortoise. And it wasn't a bite. It was me palpating them, checking for eggs. You stick your finger up in their kind of leg pits, if that makes any sense. We have armpits, they have leg pits, uh, kind of up along the back or hind area of the tortoise to see if there are any eggs in there. And that tortoise closed up really tight and kept my finger in there for quite some time. I couldn't get my finger out. And uh, I'll tell you what, a powerful tortoise, uh, it hurts. Uh, I've also had that happen with the sulcata and you could break your knuckles. So be very careful when uh, sticking your finger where it doesn't belong on a tortoise. In the meantime, you can kind of see Joe that they probably have no problem breaking the skin uh, on a human being. I've also been hit by snapping turtles. Luckily for me, it was a quick bite, broke the skin, the tortoise, uh, the turtle let go. Other turtles will bite. Big head turtles have a pretty powerful bite, um, but uh, good thing for us, uh, tortoises really don't want to bite us. So it's easy to not get bit by a tortoise. Just leave them be and don't put your fingers by their mouth. And always pay attention to how much food you've got left when feeding them by hand. Oh yeah, come on, get in there. What a gal. Got to love her. Got to love her. All right, so let's continue on, all right? You're going to get that. Have fun. Nibble away. Sorry, uh, Nostradamus, but you're too busy having a little uh, bath time. Spa time for the tortoises. Ha! Okay. Moving along, moving along. Uh, let's see who's wandering over here. I think this would actually be an interesting uh, comment. John Stapleton actually asks, Kenan, what do you do to prevent ticks? And how do you get ticks off your tortoises? Well, let's see if any of these ticks or any of these tortoises have ticks. Uh, they are in a very wooded area, so ticks are very prevalent uh, from time to time during to different times of the year. In fact, uh, when it's wet, we get a lot more ticks uh, and sometimes they're really fat ones. Uh, that you can easily see and other times they're really skinny. So what do I do? How do I prevent it? And so on and so on. Well, there's no tick on this female. So we might not get lucky and see a tick, but what I do is I use two different things. Uh, and these are just for me. These are things that I picked up. Number one, you can do something called diatomaceous earth. It's an all natural, um, it's, it's actually dirt, but it's so microscopic where the microscopic structure of the dirt is like needles. And so what it does is it pierces the exoskeletons of, um, of different insects and, uh, you know, ectoparasites like ticks. Ticks are an insect and basically, uh, they bleed out, they die. Um, you can spread that around to help control ticks. It does not hurt any of the tortoises. Uh, another thing I've used is frontline, like you would use on the dog. I just kind of spray it along the back and then carefully apply it to the legs. You never want to get it in the tortoise's eye. I've also used permethrin in the same way. Uh, and permethrin is something that we use uh, to treat snake um, enclosures uh, for mites. Um, mites, chiggers, and ticks are all very closely related. Uh, look, you can see some of these guys are here, the cherry heads. Um, so very important to kind of do that. But otherwise, I just pick them off with tweezers. Um, you can kind of twist them off and be careful not to leave the head in. Sometimes that can cause an infection. Uh, there's also something called, uh, I just walked through a spider web. Uh, anyway, uh, there's also, um, I just did it again. I just walked through another spider. I feel like that Gwen Stefani song. I'm walking through the spider webs. It's in a late 80s reference, excuse me, 90s. Uh, you know, I'm getting uh, senile in my old age and dates just don't really, aren't really the same thing as they used to be. Uh, but anyhow, oh, do you guys remember this tortoise? This is the tortoise who couldn't pull his head in. And in fact, this tortoise has a tick. You might not be able to see it, oh, but let me get comfortable. And you can see right here, He's got a tiny little tick right there. 
and I'm just going to pluck it off. And there it is. I don't know if you can see that, but that is a tick. And, um, you know, I'll just do these kind of, oh, I just squirt it. I just smashed a tick like that. And that's it. But this tortoise is doing well. He's been back out for months now. And as you can see, can pull his head all the way in again. Very, very good, uh, which is nice. And the ticks start out really small. Um, I don't worry so much about ticks uh, unless the animal is completely covered. Uh, that would be horrible. A couple of ticks is going to be normal, uh, especially when keeping them outdoors. But when they're completely covered, uh, that's when things can become a problem. So uh, if I couldn't get that tick off with my fingers, I would have got tweezers. Uh, and you can also apply the front line to a uh, Q-tip and just rub it right on the tick and the tick will die and eventually it falls off. So no big deal at all. So there you have it, everybody. Those were three, uh, did I answer three questions? Four questions? I don't even know. Uh, but we wandered a little bit and it's kind of fun just to check on all the animals. This is what I love to do. And by the way, we're back over by Sophia's Pond and look at it now. There's no more of that white stuff on it. And just the time we did this video, it cleared up nicely. Basically, the skimmer was clogged. Here's uh, one of my blonde leopard tortoises. This is one of the blonde males. Hey, what's up, dude? Looking good, looking good. Who else is out and about today? While we close this video off, let's just see who else is doing their thing. Not Pinky, not Marty. My goodness, here are the rhino iguanas. There's the female, that's Petra. Hi, Petra, say hello to everybody. How you doing there, young lady? You look good, you're looking good. Your children are looking even better. Gotta love it. All right, everybody, well, there you have it. Um, hey, you know you, you wanna see Slinky, don't you? You wanna see how he's doing? I know I do. Let's see what's up with Mr. Slinks. Hey, buddy. Slinky, come on out and say hello to everybody. Oh, somebody's getting hungry again. Somebody's getting hungry again. Slinky, man. Love you, man. All right, everybody, that is it for me. I hope you enjoyed this Ask Cam Kennan uh, episode. Just wandered around, answered some questions. Maybe we learned something, maybe we didn't. Maybe you already knew, but I'm glad you dropped by to hang out with me and my reptiles for a little bit. Uh, I'll be talking to you guys all soon. Don't forget, just head on over and uh, submit those questions to Patreon and submit some more questions down below. Like and share and all that good noise. All right, everybody, I'm out. I'll talk to you soon. Lots of reptile stuff to do and more videos to make. Thanks again. I'll see you real soon. Make sure you lock them all in there. Can't have Slinky running around now, can we? So long.